everyone, welcome. The first task of my project today is talk to you about the, the persuasive process of sales that is going to be uh, followed throughout the second part of this project, which will be convincing my potential buyer to um, pick my solution to traffic. What, think about salespeople out there these days. There are different types of salespeople, correct? So what differentiates those salespeople that you cut off mid-sentence saying, I'm not interested, from those salespeople that are actually true marketers? The answer is, the true marketer is the customer's bitch, but at the same time, manages to remain cool. He manages to, um, to follow the fundamental rule of marketing believe the lie a little bit in order to sell it, i.e. one that lies with flair. The focus of the true marketer is the client. Who is your client? What does he do? What is the need that he's lacking on and how important that is? If the customer doesn't feel that he's reached the point, that his need has reached the point of importance that he needs to act upon it, he won't. In that case, the true marketer has to plainly convince the buyer that it's that important. Because after all, since the customer did go into the store to begin with, that means he did have the bug, he did have the itch. Another point is, the good salesperson always shows that they've done their homework. What that means is that he must demonstrate he's conducted the necessary uh, research in order to conclude to the solution that is going to be presented. Even if there were never any other real options, that's besides the point. In that case, the salesperson must just simply act as if there were. Last point, if you want to be an effective salesperson, Make a good case with solid, concrete arguments. And then rest your case, i.e. don't be pushy. Customers don't like pushy. That way, you can ensure that if, if you made a good case, then you have better chances of the customer coming back to you when they actually decide to spend. Because sometimes, customers just don't want to spend at this current point in time. And remember, um, you have to be a champ and spare them. So if they want to come to you, they're going to come to you after. So let them sleep on it for a little bit. If they are convinced, or at least if they're close to being convinced, then remember to pay attention to body language. Body language sometimes speaks louder than words. Be attentive, and you might just know. Now, let's proceed to the second portion of, of uh, this project and let's apply all these fundamental rules, if I may have my system up here. The scenario selected for this portion of the project is Raymond just walked into the store where I am a salesperson because he got intrigued by this sign. Raymond, curious enough, because traffic is indeed a pretty tiresome effect these days, he walks in and starts looking around and treat to see what's being offered as a solution. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm Start good. with a strong handshake. <laughs> Important. Earns trust. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. It's How really are you? nice to have you here. I'm excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. What's your name? What brings you in today? Oh, my name is Raymond. I saw this sign. Are you tired of traffic? This looks interesting, so I come to find out. Here. And I'm guessing you are, just as I am, very tired of traffic, aren't you? Yeah. Very Tell good. me, Raymond, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in this company called IBM, uh -huh. and uh, I'm a software developer, so uh -huh. I do go to the lab every day. Would you say you live close to your work? Uh, Relatively close to your work? Relatively close. Still, it requires 20 minutes drive from my house to the high, company. High traffic? Low traffic? I mean, like... Mm -hmm. Peak time or 
Yeah, I normally go. I have to use peak time. Okay. Yeah, I cannot just go there at noon and come back in mid midnight. Yeah. Sometimes I do that, but not every day. <laughs> how, do you, how do you currently commit to commute to work? Oh, I drive my car. You drive your car. Yeah. What what car may I ask? Uh, I'm, it's a called a Trebekah. Okay. It's a Subaru. Car. Oh right. Is it high in consumption? What would uh, you yeah, it's a very thing? it's a very uh, high consumption. What would you say that you approximately spend for gas monthly? Um, around two hundred bucks. Wow. <laughs> See, I don't. I totally feel you. I don't spend as much as you, but gas is a problem. It's getting yeah. high these days. Exactly. And what about maintenance? How much would you say approximately you spend on maintenance? Oh, maintenance is also quite expensive. I would say you know, several hundred bucks every year if nothing goes wrong. I, I totally feel you there too. I have a large, a longer commute to my work, and the kilometers on the car go so fast that before you know it, it's time for my next ma maintenance. That means at least a three-digit number. Yeah, exactly. Would you be interested today to hear an alternative solution that that I think will be an amazing breakthrough no, to? to resolve all these issues. Yeah, and that's the reason I come here. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'm, I'm so glad. So I would I would very much love to present to you my solution and maybe you're gonna like it. Okay. My solution to your problem is magic carpet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. First of all, maintenance fees, which is very costly, correct? Yeah. Maintenance fees as opposed to a car it's less than a dollar. Vinegar, vinegar, with <laughs> just a bottle of vinegar, and if you, if you put it in some water, dilute it, and use a brush, that's all you need to maintain a heart. No matter what brand? No matter what brand. That's the <laughs> magic homemade solution. Okay. Don't, you know, there are, there are a lot of soaps, brands, whatever, and they cost, but there's nothing better than vinegar, and not many people know that. Size. Wouldn't you like to be able to carry a lot of things? Now with your car, you have a, a limited amount of space for a trunk and people, correct? Yeah. Well, with a carpet, it's not that expensive to get a bigger size. Then you can fit more people, dogs, cats, pets, you name it, and baggage, just more of it. And for a little extra, you can add bar handles around so that it's child proof, so that nobody falls off the carpet. Safety first, after all, correct? You have kids, I assume. Yeah, I have kids. So I'm sure I, I'm, I'm sure that you are very much interested in the safety of your children. Mm -hmm. That that means the world to us, after all. Insurance fees. Insurance fees. How much do you pay for insurance fees? Oh, that's very expensive. It's like uh, three hundred bucks a month, something like that. Imagine now just insuring a carpet. Now, how much it is? Oh, it's like close to nothing. I think it's like. Uh, for my North tenant insurance, I pay $200 per year. For just one carpet, I think it's two digits. I'd say about $50 per year. That's close to nothing. And you don't need an, 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 any special driver's license. Really? Yes, of course, it's <laughs> automatic. And now to the best point. A magic carpet would be no traffic lights, no traffic, and no collision. Why? First of all, because nobody uses them yet. Even in the future, that they will be used. Let me do some very simple math and prove my point. So, you have the road right now, and that is a two dimensional plane. <laughs> Let's assume we have an intersection, and we have a car in point P1 with <laughs> coordinates this. You don't have any other Z, it's just Z0, so that's a, a that's. And you have a point P2 with coordinates. Now, what is the probability of those two points colliding, which means collision, therefore traffic? That probability, P, P capital, is of those two colliding, is one per the finite number of x1s on on here, 
support here because your grid is defined by paved roads. You can't go anywhere on the 2D plane. Multiplied by the number of Y's. And that is your total probability. Now let's go to the magic carpet scenario where we have a three-dimensional plane. The three-dimensional plane, unpaved, we have P1 again, X1, Y1, Z1 this time, and another P2, X2, Y2, Z2, because now Z comes. So the probability of those two now colliding on the B case, A case, is same for X, same for Y, and now a third one for Z. Now, as you can see, since this grid is defined by paved roads, and this is not, we can easily infer, infer that this is much lesser than this. And this is much lesser than this. Now, with simple math and inverting, we can, we can calculate, finally, that the probability of those two colliding on this scenario is much greater than this scenario. Therefore, we can see that the probability of two cars or carpets being at the same location at the same time, because I didn't even calculate time of this equation, because then I'd have to go to Galileo for this angle. The list goes on. It's much greater on your two-dimensional plane. Therefore, solution to traffic. No traffic lights, no nothing. So, voila. You have an amazing solution to all those things. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just like simple, like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, what, do you, what would you think? Would you consider buying um, or investing in something like that? No. You don't have to commit today. <laughs> but, I'm just saying. I just have one more question. Absolutely. How about uh, the weather? Because we are living in Canada, it's very cold in the winter. Ah, it's snowing, raining. Absolutely. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Because with a standard carpet, with a, some extra, you could, it, might, it can come with a shield, mm -hmm. waterproof, snowproof, and heated. However, if you were, would be willing to invest just a little bit more, you can get the advanced carpet, which can fly beyond the clouds. Okay. And heat it, of course. Therefore, you don't have to worry about protection from any snow or rain, because you're flying beyond the clouds, but you still get heat. Sounds great. Can I do a test drive? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, we have to book an appointment. OK, let's, let's book a appointment. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's great Thank doing you. business with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, for the last portion of the speech, um, we have to have an open discussion about some feedback about uh, what um, the audience thought about the sales process, how well it was conducted, and um, and uh, what, a, what the salesperson could have done better, etc. So I'll just open it before. Absolutely. There. I think that tells it all. That it was effective. Do you guys have any comments or? I think it was really good. I thought like uh, um, the concept that you have to make uh, make a person think that they really need it, which is what salespersons do about the time. Like you just want to go to buy like a sixty dollar printer and just like oh you but you need this and this and this and you end up spending like three hundred bucks. <laughs> And also, I like the demonstration on the board. It was really good because that's what salespeople do as well. They just like you know, use a bunch of like complicated words, and you don't even know what's going on. So you're like, oh, okay, okay, it makes sense. <laughs> so overall, I think it was really good. Excellent, thank you. I thought it was great. I was wondering about what were your pro what was the process that you used? Was it something that could be extended to sales in general? Like I noticed, for example, that you had a lot of 
eliciting questions to Raymond. You know, what's similarly uh, a sketch would ask about your family size? What are your needs so that they could tailor mm -hmm. their product to the so customer? So basically, I tried to incorporate in in the manners and um, uh, in, in, in the process that I did, I did for this example. I tried to to touch all the bullet points that I talked to that I talked about initially. So becoming personal, coming close to personally to your buyer, understanding their needs, uh, understand understanding how important important they, they are for them, and then being able to say, you know, I can provide you with a solution that will um, resolve your problems or potentially resolve your problems. And I also try to not be pushy in the end, just let them, you know, sleep on it and think about it a little bit and say, yeah, I want to invest that, maybe not right now, I don't have the budget or it's not my, in my immediate list of things that I need to take care of, but it's something that I want to do. And also I try to be cheerful, I try to be likable, because by the end of the day, we tend to not do business with people that we don't actually like, and that's really, really important. Okay, well, good points. Yeah. A couple things. Very, very good. You're well-spoken and good presence and friendly, as you said. I think there's an inconsistency at one point. One point, I think you asked Raymond how much you think he spent for gas. I think he said like three hundred dollars a month or, or hundred dollars a month. Right. And I think you said yours was a bit less, but then later you said your commute was longer than his. So you know you could have a better mileage in your car, but it seems like a little bit inconsistent there. Just the, the image I get from that. That's all. Go catch. Yeah. And then also uh, I don't, about I don't the. Spend that much money. I, don't, okay. <laughs> I don't spend that much money. Yeah, so maybe you drive a, a moped then. instead of a. I have a standard, maybe, but yeah. I, I hear it's better in consumption. So I see how it could work, it just didn't sound that good to me, anyway. Yeah, oh, maybe I forgot to point out that my magic carpets don't, ha don't have any gas fees. <laughs> That's, That's a good point. That yeah. was the, the point that I forgot to mention, that there's no gas fees for, yeah. for a magic carpet. You don't have any gas. The other, I think, hard selling point is, you told Raymond that he, there'd be no collisions because he's the first one. Uh, most people don't want to be the first one. That's something. <laughs> good catch. So, uh, that might be a challenging point there. Very good. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. If not, I will leave you with one last tip and trick for selling. If you want to be an effective salesperson, wear glasses. <laughs> Studies have shown that if you wear glasses, people perceive you subconsciously as a more knowledgeable and trustworthy person. Now, <laughs> if I didn't tell you that, a lot of you guys wouldn't Google it, but if I didn't tell you that right now, you probably wouldn't because I'm wearing glasses and I said so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>